Hello again. Today we're back on the Acorn Electron with the Plus One expansion. Now a couple of days ago I received this through the post from Dave Hitchens, the master of Acorn Electron expansions. Um, this is an updated version of the Prez AP6 that was released in 1988. Now he originally did an updated version released in 2016 and now it's 2021, he's done a version 2. Um, so this video is going to be about installing this and then assuming I don't muck that up, then we'll move on to what it can do. So what is the AP6? Well, the Plus One expansion has two cartridge slots. These allow you to add four extra sideways memory banks, two per slot. And inside there's a utility ROM that contains the software to drive the analog joystick and parallel printer ports. You can upgrade this for one that adds extra star command utilities, however. But, as there's no pass-through connector, the Electron is left with seven sideways banks that you can't use. The AP6 makes use of the space between the main board and the top of the case to add a daughter board which allows you to make use of those missing banks, and in my view you can never have too many sideways banks on an Acorn 8-bit machine. OK, so uh, Dave does sell these boards pre-built, although if you ask him nicely he will send you the uh, components and the board separately for you to solder it yourself if you enjoy doing that more than I do. But regardless, you still have to do some work on the Plus One board itself. You've got to desolder two of the chips and replace them with uh, a couple of IC sockets to uh, allow the connectors on the back of the AP6 to plug into the board. After removing the top of the Plus One case, the first thing to do is undo the six screws that fix the circuit board onto the bottom. Then you screw on these standoffs that come with the AP6 to support the plus one board when inserting memory chips. And now we're ready to move on to the board modification. A few weeks ago I had to remove some components from my Commodore 128 DCR's motherboard to fix its video issues, and I decided to buy a desoldering station, so it'll be very helpful for this. This is basically a soldering iron with a vacuum pump in the middle. The iron heats the solder and, when you pull this trigger, the pump kicks in and sucks it up into this glass tube. Okay, um, so that went pretty well. I've uh, desoldered the chip that was in IC6 and another one that was in IC1. Uh, the only real problem I had was uh, the top pin here in IC1, which on the rear of the board is connected to a big uh, ground wire, I think, uh, and that acts as a bit of a heat sink. Um, so it was awkward to get the heat in there to get rid of all the solder. Um, but I put a regular soldering iron on this side of the board to free up the leg of the chip, and then once that was uh, free and removed the chip, I could use the uh, desolderer to uh, clear up all the excess solder around the hole. So I've got some nice clean holes now ready to uh, install the sockets. Okay, I've um, now got the sockets soldered in. Um, that went in pretty easy and they're on flat. Um, so the instructions now say to fit the AP6, but I think what I might try doing is putting the original ICs back in the board and checking that's okay before I move on to the next step to make sure I've soldered the sockets in correctly and not damaged the board in any way. Right, so I've put IC1 and IC6 into the new sockets where they were soldered directly on. Then I've reattached the plus one with the AP6 onto the back of the electron. So let's turn this thing on and see if it still works. And everything seems to be hunky-dory. So, after taking IC1 and IC6 out again, the next thing to do is remove IC11, as the AP6 itself needs to connect into its socket. This is a little awkward as the capacitor at the end of the socket makes it difficult to lever out evenly. You also need to remove the plus one support ROM, as the AP6 needs to connect there too, and provides its own ROM. After screwing the board back into the case, we move on to what's probably the most delicate part of the install. As there is very little space between the two boards, these disc capacitors on the plus one need to be gently bent over to avoid them hitting the underside of the AP6, taking great care not to snap them off. We can now attach the AP6 itself. After taking care to line up the pins on its underside with the sockets on the plus one, you can then firmly press it down to install it. The final step is to insert the chip removed from IC11 on the plus one into the IC7 socket on the AP6. So, a first test. We'll attach the plus one with the AP6 to the electron and try turning on. And we've got a happy beep. We've not added any extra ROMs yet, but the machine is working and the plus one support ROM is there. Okay, so the way the AP6 works is it's got a series of sockets here which provide the memory for the various sideways banks. You've got one here for a bank four, one for bank five, one for bank six, bank seven, 
14 and a combined 32k socket for banks 13 and 15. There's also a variety of jumpers which allow you to enable and disable various combinations of sockets and one of the jumpers, jumper 5, allows you to disable the bank 5 socket and combine bank 5 with bank 6 and put a single 32k chip in there which will provide both banks. Now what I'm going to do to initially test things is I've got a, uh, an EEPROM here I burnt on my uh, BBC Masters EEPROM programmer um, which has got HiBasic, the um, version of BASIC that runs in the high memory on a tube processor and I'm going to stick that in the socket for bank 7 as a test. Okay, so to uh, test this out, I've reattached the plus one with the AP6 to the back of my Electron, um, and I've added the uh, advanced tube interface cartridge, which you may have seen in the Elk SD plus one video I did, and I've also connected my Raspberry Pi 3A plus tube processor. Um, so when I turn the Electron on, hopefully I'll be able to enable the tube and then use the high basic ROM uh, that I've added to the AP6. So the Electron powers on, but it does need an extra control break after a second or two to give the Pi time to boot and switch to the Virtual 6502 tube processor. Xmon 2 and the basic editor are in the battery-backed RAM in the ATI cartridge, but, crucially, the High Basic ROM has appeared in Bank 7. We can start it with the star High Basic command, and then print the lower and upper bounds of memory for basic programs in hex, as well as the number of bytes available, and we've got 44k free. Normal BASIC on a tube 6502 would be stuck with just 30, so that's all working. The support ROM also lets us set high BASIC to be the default language on control break, although this setting is lost on powerdown. A useful new feature of the support ROM is if you accidentally copy a broken image that prevents the system from starting up into a rewritable but non-volatile bank, such as an EE prompt. Here I've written a quick service ROM that will hang on service call 1, which is the operating system asking the ROM how much shared memory it needs. It will just sit there printing exclamation marks repeatedly and never return. Normally you'd have to open the case, remove the chip and then find some external way to erase it. But I can hold down the star key and press break. The full startup process is aborted and you're dropped into a supervisor star prompt, where you can software unplug or wipe a bank. Once you've done this, you can control break to reset and fix the problem normally without the broken bank enabled. The AP6 also features a real-time clock and is supplied with a battery for it, but there's currently no support for this in the ROM. This is planned to be enabled in a future software update though. And speaking of software upgrades, the support ROM on the AP6 is stored in an EEPROM, so it can be updated through software. Now there is hardware to support doing that in situ, but that isn't enabled right now, so for the moment you have to move the chip to the Bank 5 socket, do the upgrade and then move it back. So, there's not really much more to it. You get 7 extra ROM banks, all contained within the same physical box as just the plus one. One thing to note though, is that the 32k sockets 5, 6 and 13, 15 are connected up for a 28C 256E EEPROM, rather than a 27 256 EEPROM. The pinout of these is slightly different, and if you use an EEPROM, you'll get the same half of the memory in both banks. For me, the great thing about the AP6 is it frees up the three RAM banks in my Elk SD Plus One and the ATI with ABR cartridge. This is especially useful if I have to swap one out for, say, my Prez DFS ADFS disk interface, as I can still keep things like High Basic available. So all in all, the AP6 makes a great upgrade for the Plus One, and I'm really grateful for Dave for making an upgraded batch of these available. I was envious of the Elk SD128 with its seven banks of RAM, um, but with the AP6 and the Plus One and the Elk SD Plus One and the ATI with ABR, I've got more banks of memory than I could possibly need on an Acorn Electron. Um, so that's, that's great. And if I didn't like it, I could um, even take the AP6 out and put the chips back in. Um, so I think that's probably all there is to say for it. So uh, the next thing to do is probably uh, screw the case back on this and actually use it. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting and maybe even useful. And uh, see you next time.